Hello and welcome to WatchGuard Security Week in Review, a video podcast dedicated to quickly summarizing the biggest information and network security stories each week. I'm your host, Corey Nockreiner, and this is the episode for the week starting July 30th, 2012. This week's episode will consist of two parts. First, I'll give you some quick updates on last week's Black Hat and DEF CON conferences, then I'll share some security stories from the week. Let's start with the Black Hat and DEF CON updates. There's two particular presentations I want to talk about this week from those conferences. The first was a big presentation from a well-known cryptography expert and hacker known as Moxie Marlinspike. Moxie gave a talk talking about some vulnerabilities in the encryption algorithm called MS Chap 2, a Microsoft encryption algorithm. This is an encryption algorithm we use for things like PPTP VPN, and that's sometimes used in some wireless authentication. Specifically, when you're using WPA2 Enterprise PEEP authentication, you'll be using MS Chap 2. Without getting into all the technical details, Moxie found a way to really break down the encryption used by MS Chap 2 down to a hash that really is the equivalent of, say, DES encryption. Long story short, Moxie found that if he can sniff a MS Chap 2 authentication session, he can actually crack the, the DES equivalent hash within 24 hours. As part of the talk, Moxie also released a tool called Chat Crack, which can help hackers actually capture this MS Chat v2 authentication session, and then they can actually upload it to this cloud cracking service that Moxie launched called Cloud Crack. Uh, so basically, if you can sniff a network using Moxie's tools, you can crack any sort of MS Chat 2 authentication within 24 hours. So this means PPTP VPN is probably no good anymore. And by the way, if you're using WPA2 enterprise PEEP authentication in your network, that can probably be cracked as well. So the tech takeaways are twofold. First of all, PPTP VPN is a depreciated VPN algorithm. You should not use it for VPN anymore. I'd recommend instead you use SSL-based VPN or IPsec VPN, preferably using certificates to authenticate with the IPsec session. On top of that, if you're using WPA2 Enterprise PEEP authentication on your wireless networks, I recommend you change that to EEP authentication with TLS. The second Black Hat DEF CON update is a bunch of security vulnerabilities in Huawei routers. A couple researchers from the Recurity Labs a security company did a talk talking about how they found a ton of vulnerabilities in the routers that a Chinese manufacturer called Huawei produces, specifically the AR18 and AR29 model routers. Without going into a ton of detail, these researchers said they found many, many buffer overflow and heap overflow and, and other memory corruption vulnerabilities in these routers. They described these vulnerabilities as classic 1990 style, easy to exploit vulnerabilities. For a long time, security researchers have known that certain unbound functions like Sprint F should not be used because they, they tend to lead to buffer overflow vulnerabilities. And these researchers said they found thousands and thousands of lines of code using these Sprint F functions, which are very, very dangerous. They were also sad to find that Huawei didn't seem to have any sort of security disclosure email address or contact, and they don't seem to release security updates in the way other router companies did. With many foreign countries suspicious of technology coming from China due to cyber attacks and and the stealing of intellectual property, a lot of people were particularly worried about the vulnerabilities found in these routers. Shortly after this research came out, Huawei did respond, and they said they're investigating the, these allegations of these vulnerabilities. So hopefully we'll see updates to these routers in the future. If you use these routers, I highly recommend you keep your eye out for any updates from Huawei. So let's move on to normal security stories, starting with a unpatched vulnerability in Microsoft Exchange. If you looked at my text update a few weeks back, you might have seen that Oracle released their big CPU update that fixed tons of vulnerabilities in a lot of their products. 
Well, in the last week or so, Microsoft also released a security vulnerability. Apparently, Microsoft Exchange leverages Oracle outside-in technology to parse certain attachments and to display them in the browser. Unfortunately, Oracle fixed a bunch of security vulnerabilities in Outside In, and these fixes haven't come to Microsoft Exchange yet. This means if an attacker can uh, send you an email with a specially crafted document, and he can get you to preview that using the Outside In technology built into Exchange, he may be able to execute code on your machine. Now, the good news is Oracle doesn't rate these as very severe vulnerabilities. I really don't think these are going to affect a lot of users, nor that attackers will exploit this in the wild. However, if you do use Exchange Server, you should look out for an Exchange patch. Maybe it will come out during August's Microsoft Patch Day if they have enough time to fit it in. A few weeks ago, you may have also seen my story about the suspicion that Dropbox may have been hijacked. A bunch of Dropbox users were receiving a bunch of spam, and people suspected perhaps Dropbox had some sort of security breach. As it turns out, this week, Dropbox did confirm they had a security breach. According to their blog post, Dropbox suspects that attackers gain access to some of their users' passwords in some other website password breach. However, besides just gaining access to some Dropbox user passwords, they also gained access to a Dropbox employee account on Dropbox as well. As it turns out, this particular employee had a file on his Dropbox that had the email addresses of an undisclosed amount of Dropbox users. And that's how the attackers got their hands on these email addresses to start spamming them. As a result, Dropbox has promised to do two things. Uh, first of all, they plan to implement a new two-token authentication method to allow you to, to have a second token of authentication if you choose. On top of that, Dropbox is also adding a new page where you can see all the times you've accessed your account. Hopefully, this will help you detect whether an unknown computer might be accessing your Dropbox account. Like all the other web breaches of the past, if you're a Dropbox user, you should definitely go and change your Dropbox password. On top of that, if you use the same password everywhere, you should stop doing that, and you should change your password everywhere else. So let me finish off with a few kind of fun security-related stories. The first has to do with Facebook's first public filing. In the filing, Facebook released a lot of information, including the fact that 8.7% of the Facebook accounts they have are actually fake. That means there's about 83 million fake Facebook accounts. Now, there's many reasons people might have a fake Facebook account, but many of these accounts are actually used for malicious purposes. If you've been following my predictions over the past few years, I talk about how dangerous social networks are and how easy it is for hackers to use them for social Social engineering. So seeing Facebook confirm all these fake accounts really confirms that bad guys are using Facebook for evil. The second fun security related story has to do with a company trying to steal Anonymous's intellectual property. According to recent headlines, a French firm tried to trademark the classic anonymous headless logo as well as one of the common phrases anonymous uses. I have no clue why this French firm tried to trademark anonymous's logo, and they're certainly asking for trouble. In fact, later in the week, anonymous reacted and they vowed revenge against this French company. So we'll see what happens in the days to come. Well, that covers another week in security. I hope you enjoyed this week's Black Hat and DEF CON update and found the other network security stories informational. If you want more information about the latest and breaking network security news, be sure to follow our blog, WatchGuardSecurityCenter.com. You can also check me out on Twitter. I go by the alias at SecAdept. Thank you for watching, and here at WatchGuard, we're rooting for you. Thank mm -hmm. you.